Hey, greetings everyone. Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at something really cool to bypass Windows Defender called MC Bypass. It's going to be really cool, but before we get started, please do make sure that you hit the old subscribe button and follow me on Instagram. I'm out there, so check me out. Just got that started. Uh, hit like as well, and as always, I love having conversations with you good folks out there in the comments section. So make sure you comment for me as well. That said, let's jump into this idea that is MC Bypass. I know it sounds kind of like, uh, it sounds cool. I got to be honest. Like for me, it just sounds kind of cool. Like I hear MC Bypass. Almost like I'm getting away with watching movies that I should, you know, AMC, but it's not AMC, it's AMSI, or this is the anti-malware scan interface that's found inside of the Windows operating systems, as it were, right? And this will actually, this is, this is kind of a really neat thing. I've just looked at it very preliminarily. I don't want to, I don't want to pregame too hard for you, for you out there. I want us to kind of like go down this road together. I want to learn about this. This kind of came up. Uh, as I was hanging out with the one Mr. John Hammond, and he was doing some uh, uh, malware analysis, analysis, I guess is the right way, right? Malware analysis. Um, he was analyzing malware, and he talked about AMC bypass, and he just kind of fleetingly went by, and he was explaining that the the malware that he was looking at was doing that. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'm not 100%. I understand about the idea of uh, malware and antivirus evasion techniques, but I'm not familiar really with this. So I need to get schooled up on that. So that's what I'm going to take a look at today. Let's get into the computer here. I can find my mouse. There we go. I just Googled it really quickly. I, I've done nothing more than that. And that's what I was looking at when I was like, the, Microsoft has developed the AMSI or anti-malware scan interface as a method to defend against common malware execution. Cool. I mean, that's that's pretty sweet, actually. That's that's neat that they put that in their operating system and they thought about it, probably because they've been known to have an issue or two in the past, in the past, right? Uh, and they are definitely a targeted operating system. So it just makes sense that they would be doing that. And, and the people at Microsoft have been working uh, toward more robust security. I'm not saying that they're, they're successful in that. Uh, they can be and they cannot be. It's all up to us as the hackers to um, to be schooled and skilled in the necessary tradecraft to get around this stuff. We're red teaming it up. So I'm gonna click on this first one and just see where that takes. This is the number one with a bullet. And this is found at pentestlaboratories.com forward slash 2021 forward slash 05 forward slash 17 forward slash AMC dash bypass dash methods. That's right, there you go. All right, Microsoft has developed, this is a method to defend against common malware execution and protect the end user. Uh, the default Windows Defender interacts with the AMC API to scan PowerShell scripts, VBA macros, JavaScript, uh, and scripts using the Windows script host technology during execution to prevent arbitrary execution of code. That does sound like, uh, well, for us, if we're doing some red teaming or hacking ethically, of course, uh, that would be a good time. But it's not a good time for people that are actually running Windows. They don't. We don't want people to be able to bypass that stuff or run uh, arbitrary uh, execution of code. So it says, however, other antivirus products might contain support for AMC, so organizations are not restricted to the use of Windows Defender. So I guess that's why they built this, so that they can, okay, you don't want to run Windows Defender, that's fine, I guess. You know how Microsoft is. They like you to just use everything Microsoft, and I get that, right? They're, they're a company. They want to make that money. Um, and why go anywhere else when they offer a very valid, uh, the Windows Defender's not bad. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you any otherwise. So, but if you're running something else and you want to interface with this system, that's fine. That's what AMC is all about. So really cool. Let's see here how AMC works. Quick and dirty here. When a user executes a script or initiates PowerShell, the AMC.dll is injected into the process memory space. Ooh, I always love this technical jargon that gets in here. It just twirls my beanie, right? I have a good time. When we talk about this stuff, it just makes me happy to hear it. I know I'm like a, uh, me and my friend Justin used to talk about uh, doing a show called Technex, where we would be like two very technical, because we're both very technical, and we're both from very rural parts of, uh, I guess we are considered a redneck, you know, or we know rednecks, we grew up rednecks. Um, it's just funny play on words. We don't take it too seriously, right? Uh, let's see here. Prior to the execution of the following two APIs, 
Or you, that's why we always do the voice. Hey there, man, because I grew up with people talk just like this. That's how a lot of people talk. And it'd be just funny is if one of them good old boys out there knows how to change a tire and he knows about DLL injections and AMC bypass. Right? <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I'm, I digress. Prior to execution, the following two APIs are used by the antivirus to scan the buffer and strings for sign of mal signs of malware. So, we've got this AMC scan buffer. Let's make sure you guys can see that. An AMC scan string. If a known signature is identified, execution doesn't initiate, and mess a message appears that the script has been blocked by the antivirus software. The following diagram illustrates the... AMC scanning. So that's cool. Here's a nice little, hey, you've got this PowerShell process and into the AMC DLL it goes. It runs these two AMC scan string and AMC, AMC scan buffer. If uh, Windows Defender detects a signature, you get a lovely little piece of red text that tells you how horrible you are and you should not run that. Uh, so I wanted to test this. And I know that this can be extremely sensitive, like anything will move the needle on this stuff because I've played around with it a little bit before. So I'm going to run PowerShell. PowerShell. Yes, bring it. All right, so here's PowerShell. Can I just like control plus that? No, I can't. I can shift control. How do you, I don't know how to pow, PowerShell increase font. So I'll go to, what is it? It's edits? No, properties. There we go. Cursor size, font, that's what we're looking for. Let's go to 20. Okay, then. There we go. Now we got some action. Now we can see. I'm just going to do that so it full screens. All right. So in my, I think I put it in my documents directory DR. Yeah. So I was playing around. I was like, I was going to get Mimi Cats. And I was like, can't you just run something? And you'll notice this has zero length in it. There, there's no data in there. If I type, if I can type, uh, invoke Mimi Cats. You'll notice I'm still I'm still getting blocked. There's nothing in that file. It's just a file named invoke mimicatsps one But you'll see right here it's saying this script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus software. That is the AMC business chucking it over to Windows Defender. Windows Defender goes, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, good sir, but I do believe that Invoke Mimi Cats is bad and you shouldn't run it. And I'm like, well, there's nothing really there. But like I said, this thing can be pretty sensitive. So there it is. Uh, in effect, we've seen it work. Just minimize this. We'll be back to here. Now let's take a look at evasions. What can we do? To get around that. Let's take a look. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Microsoft implemented AMC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Offensive tooling also supports AMC bypasses that could be used in red team engagements uh, prior to any script execution, but manual methods could also be deployed. Number one, PowerShell downgrade. I mean, it sounds cool. Like, you know, it sounds big, but it's just, oh, we're just downgrading. And you look, you, it says that even though PowerShell 2.0 has been deprecated, uh, Microsoft hasn't removed it from the operating system. Well, there you go. Like I said, they're trying. You know, they're they're trying hard. Don't 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 come down on them too hard. But here they are, saying this is dangerous, and it doesn't. Look at this. Older versions of PowerShell doesn't contain security controls such as AMC protection, and could be used as a form of evasion. Downgrading the PowerShell version to an older version is trivial and requires the execution of the following command which is PowerShell dash version two. So let's give that a shot. I don't know if this will work, but we'll see. I think it will. Uh, oh, it's CLS here, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So it is, you know, I'm still going to bump that font for you good folks. I still find that to be, uh, it, it seemed to make the window bigger and not necessary. Oh, that's the size. Cause I'm a fool. Even though I'm in fonts, very strange. Isn't there like a, in a terminal or I thought there was like an option to actually change the size of the font. I thought that was it. 24. Let's try that. It's full screen. Yeah, it's a little better. It's a little better. All right. So we've got PowerShell dash version two, if I'm not mistaken, Bing. Oh, it is not installed. Oh, oh, cause I'm, I don't have the .NET framework. Okay. That's in interesting. So I need version 2.05727. Okay, so, well, you know what that tells me? 
is my machine, if someone tried to do this bypass, it would not work because I don't have the dot work net framework installed. Um, and that is that version 2.0. Now that's just because this is a fairly new PC for me. I haven't needed to have .NET Framework installed, at least not for anything I can remember. But it doesn't say it's that version 2 isn't installed, but it is required to run it. So if for any reason I install something that requires the .NET Framework of V2.0, and maybe other versions would suffice, I'm actually, ooh, you know what? Let's stop and just see if we can get some. I want to check the, let me go to... You're like, what are you doing? You're talking crazy, man. I know. I'm like, my thoughts are jumping all over the place. I'm going to open the control panel. Uh, and I'm going to do that by clicking the right thing. And control panel. And I'm going to go to the programs and features. And then go to look and see if I have any .NET framework installed. It does not look like it. Let's go to Windows features on or off. Does that and maybe in there? .NET Framework 4.8, but not like .NET Framework 3 or .NET Framework 2. Let's see if we can install that. Uh, let's see here. Download .NET 2.0. Let's see here. There it is. Download that. Let's get it going. I can always uninstall it, right? You're like, you're making your system less secure. Yes, I know. It's all for the cause, right? It's all for learning and, and understanding and trying to be better at this stuff, right? So I want to download. Yes, English is right. That all looks good. Hit the download. Come on. Give it to me. Yeah. Save it. Give it. Yeah. You can see where I was trying to download uh, uh, PowerSploit and Brave was like, no, you don't. You don't play with that stuff. Are you crazy? You out of your mind? I'm like, yeah, kind of. A little bit. I ain't scared. I do what I want. Open, let's see, your show and folder. Fire that off. Get that installed. Yes, such a pretty chime. There you go. All right, so this is telling me, oh, it includes 2.0. So if you if you install the .NET Framework 3.5, it includes 2.0 and 3.0. Yes, go. Install. And honestly, .NET 3.5 is probably something I would have installed eventually anyway, just for all the random shenanigans I do. Probably should be doing this all in a VM, but hey, what are you gonna do? Right? I'll, like I said, I'll uninstall it when I'm done, uh, or I'll uninstall version 2.0 of PowerShell, which is probably the more, the like the better option. Just get rid of the 2.0 PowerShell. You ain't gonna worry about it. Then I can have .NET whatever I want, as long as there's no known vulnerabilities, which I don't know any of. But uh, yeah, this is fun. We're just waiting for this to download. Almost there, We're almost at the station. But hopefully once we get this installed, this little downgrade attack, right? Might bring us to the to the mountaintop, as it were. Come on, download the files. You can do this thing. Man, I should have brought a cup of water in here. I'm a little a little parched today. A little I've been speaking. I had a webinar today, then I filmed a YouTube asset for uh work. Uh, but it was really cool because it's gonna be a CTF walkthrough, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be good stuff. I'm trying to bring you good folks out there, all the goods. That's that's my that's my way. That's how I do things, right? I right, come on. That I hate when it gets to that little tiny bar. You just got to go. Just just I feel like office space, right? When he's trying to get out of work, <laughs> he's like, I want to come on." You know, and then the bar fills in and then another bar shows up. He's like, "You got to be kidding me." All right. We've got to be close. We've got to be almost there. Please? Simon says go? I never would have thought this would have been like this difficult to do. You know what, though? I'm just being impatient. When you got the camera running and you're trying to show people stuff, the last thing in the world you want is to wait for a file to download, which is exactly what's happening now. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's that. So what I'm going to do is, oh, oh, it's installing. Hey, hey. I, I think all you have to do is in, uh, threaten to pause the video and then it will go. Yeah, I'm going to pause that video good and hard. A man be paused all day long. Oh, I'm just trying to coax it into, into installing. 
Anyway, a couple of you ask about my guitars <laughs> while we're waiting. Uh, I've got quite a few. I always try to rotate something different up there. I don't have a ton of stuff, but I have a few. Up there right now, Paul Reed Smith SE that I bought way back in the day. Love that guitar. I use it for playing like alternate tunings, that one specifically. Uh, I've got others as well, but maybe I'll throw a shout out to the old guitars in the back. And you can't see them over here, but there's amps that way. But can you see that? Amps are that way. Oh, you can't see the guitar because I've got the computer screen up. Close up me. Yeah, there it is. There's the guitar. That's the PRSSE that I bought. 2000, like six, somewhere in there. Yeah, something like that. But there we go. We got this installed. We'll get back to the computer. No more guitar stuff. All right, so that is installed. Let's see if that, what is this? What is this? Oh, I, I express setup. Install using compatibility settings. Whatever you need, man. Just get it done. Yes. Do the thing. This thing always acts like is. Uh, did the program work correctly? I don't know. Sure. Work fine. <laughs> Scared. Of, I don't need the download thing anymore. And let's bring up PowerShell. Let's try it one more time. Hey, hey. Well, look at there. Now that we're in here. Right, we got the invoke Mimi cats. I can do the same thing. Type invoke Mimi cats. Oh, and it ran. Oh, that was too stupid easy. Okay, that was an easy one. So here's the thing. If uh, yeah, you can downgrade into PowerShell version two, then you can run dangerous things because it's not doing an AMC check. FYI, and that was kind of stupid easy to do. Um, uh, wow. That was kind of cool, actually. All right, let's move on. We got one in the bag. Not that I'm going to demo every one of these things. Uh, I know there's a few of them in this list because I saw how big the scroll bar is and the fact that it's being numbered seems to indicate the fact that there would be more than one. Um, let's go to the, let's go to the next one. Cause that was ridiculous. Uh, let's see here. Base 64 encoding. Okay. No, blah, 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 to prove that if base64 is used on strings, the AMC utils and AMC init, yeah, AMC init failed, that trigger AMC and decoded at runtime could be used as an evasion defeating these signatures of Microsoft. This technique prevents AMC, prevents AMC scanning capability for the current process by setting the AMC failed flag or AMC init failed flag. Okay, so... I'm taking that to mean that if you set this or use base 64, all right, so here's the original AMC bypass, ref.assembly to get type, system.management, automat, AMC utils, get field, and there it is. So basically you're saying that AMC didn't start, right? AMC init failed. So you're flagging that AMC just didn't work so just go ahead and run this. So don't worry about AMC checking because it didn't work anyway. So I guess you go on to the next step, which is run this code. And then here's a base 64 version of that, which I guess is the, the bypass. You base 64 encode this stuff. So you can see this text dot encoding, right? And then, oops, a little too far. Unicode dot get string. Was that back here at all? No. So... We got to see what it's doing here from base 64 string. So you just start popping the base 64 equivalents of see all this stuff right here is actually like base 64 C dot get field and then text encoding unicorn string get blah, 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 blah is going to be right. There's the base 64 and that's going to be all this stuff, which is normally like, Hey, don't do that. Uh, I might give you a problem, but here, because it's base 64 encoded, we don't get that problem. We get a bypass. Um, I wonder if that'll work. Is it is it actually running anything, or is it just like how do you run this? All right, invoke Mimi Cats. So I'm looking at there. I don't have a. Sorry, you can't really increase the the size of the picture. I'll read it to you though. It looks like it's throwing that stuff at it. I'm looking for where you actually, 
Oh, you just run that string. Okay, I'm going to double click that, copy, and then here, bing, fire off. Ooh, it didn't like that, did it? No, it did not. Oh, antivirus found threats. What did it find? What did it hate? What is it not a fan of? All right. Maybe it's in like the PC could be at risk. I don't want to run a scan. So it just didn't like that. Okay. So it did, it's not that it found like the invoke Mimi cats PS one thing that I made. It just did not like that code, even though that was base 64 encoded. That was the, that was the bypass. This one didn't seem to have worked at least not on my system. That doesn't mean it won't work. It just means it didn't work here. Could work somewhere else. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's get a move on here. Get out of my face. All right. Hooking number three hooking. Um, uh, that's an interesting choice of words. Uh, Tom Carver created a proof of concept in the form of a DLL file, which evades AMC by hooking into the AMC scan buffer function. The AMC scan buffer will then be executed with dummy parameters. The DLL needs to be injected into the PowerShell process, which the AMC bypass will be performed. Okay. So you got this simple injector.exe, which I don't have. And then you invoke PowerShell and then AMC hook.dll. Right? That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's like a one big one liner kind of thing. And then off it goes. I guess you would have to go get that and download it. I I assume that's what's going on. That takes us to number well, that was a quick one. Um I don't see where that is though. I know that's not this. This is just the the commands to execute. And then here is like a, a picture of it working. Try the new cross-platform PowerShell. What is all this? Okay, yeah. Got a process ID for PowerShell. So, so yeah, this is a, this looks like a compiled program that does this. You give it all the necessary items and you got your bypass. All right, memory patching. Number four, Daniel Duggan. Really, is it Duggan or Duggan? I think it's Duggan with two Gs. I, I would assume it's Duggan. He released an AMC bypass, which patches the AMC scan buffer function in order to return always AMC result clean, which indicates that no detection has been found. The patch is displayed in the following line. So you run this, and then the bypass has been released in C Sharp and PowerShell. The DLL can be loaded and executed with the following commands. Okay. Okay, so you need to get the bypass downloaded for this to work and then it will run and here it is like showing you how invoke mimikatz doesn't work and then they do system reflection that assembly load file and then there's this amc bypass dll which i don't have a copy of either i might be able to go here Let's check that old rasta mouse is this it no, this is .cs, but maybe you have to compile that. Yeah, maybe so. That's a little too much work. I'm not getting that deep in the weeds. I just want to be aware of it. Maybe that would be a way I would go down a little bit further in the future, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. All right, what else do we got here? Uh, that was number four. Oh, there's a little more here. By default, PowerShell version is getting flagged. The AMC trigger could be used to discover strings that are flagged by the AMC making calls to AMC scan buffer. Following lines have been identified and will need to be obfuscated. So there you go. Don't forget to obfuscate that goodness. How did they do it? They just kind of concatenated things together. A, a standard trick of the trade. Can, for those of you who are, I uh, don't mean to talk past you. Sorry. Concatenation is just the taking of things and smashing them together. So instead of having, uh, what was it, the word here? So like AMC trigger is probably going to get picked up and go, hey, that's wrong. You can't do that. And you get the red text and you, you know, die inside a little. Uh, what I can do is I can uh, concatenate or smash the, or kind of break apart. And then as it runs, it'll put it all back together. So I take their um, example is to take AMC plus scan plus buffer yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's not in the, uh, not in the actual name or the commands. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble today. Man, my brain just ain't working. 
Um, but then there's maybe that's inside of the actual uh, ASB bypass. All right. Then there's obfuscated code. Look at this. The code contained within the PowerShell script will evade AMC and perform memory patching. Is this it? Is this the whole thing? Um, it could be. Is this AMC bypass or ASB bypass.ps1? I don't know. Guess what? I'm going to try it. Whoa. I guess it's already done. What am I doing? This is not how you do this, Daniel. Go to here. Grab that. Copy. And then go to my folder. Go to here. Go bang, and say new. Text documents. And call this. What was it called? A. I hate when I can't remember. What did they call this thing? <laughs> I just cannot remember this. Okay, be that way. Get out of my way, because I can't see what is going on. ASB bypass. Jeez. I'm horrible at this. ASB bypass. And then change that to PS1. It's one. Yes, I'm sure I want to change it. And then we will edit it and add all that... Why am I going to ISC? That's not what I wanted. Just want to do the. I guess that's the. I'm going to open with Notepad. Okay, there we go. Now we're talking here. Get this out of the way. Get that out of the way. Let's see here. Go over here. Grab this code. Copy. Plop a ploppity plop. Paste. Hopefully you didn't pick up those. Yes, it did. That's okay. I can delete all that. Bam. All right. File. Save. Bam. All right. So now let's give it a shot. Let's see if this works. Where did my PowerShell code? Did I close it? Sorry. Oh, you know what it did? It probably, it probably closed on me. <laughs> it's like, no, sir. I'm done with this. All right, CD into documents, DIR. There we go, dot slash ASB bypass one. Ooh, it didn't like that. Because running scripts is disabled. For more information, aha. That is true. There is ways to get around this though. Uh, yeah, well, you know what? We're gonna add this to our little fun time here. And it's been a while since I've done this. Um, just cause I've been doing other things, but let's see here. Um, so run PowerShell scripts or bypass. That's what I want. Bypass PowerShell script restriction. It's like you're going to do an IEX and no profile, this, that, and the other 15 ways to validate. There you go. There we go. Hey, we're getting a two-for-one sale today. Not only are we learning how to bypass AMC, but we're also learning how to bypass uh, script restrictions. So, hey, what are you going to do? Execution policy, I guess they're calling it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just give me, the, give me the goods. So, yeah, I bet if we do a get execution policy, get dash execution policy, it doesn't even let me run that. It's not recognized. Oh. Oh, that's weird. Why did it do that? Get execution policy. Oh, there we go. Restricted. I, I added an extra character. That was the problem. So yeah, it's restricted. And we are going to, yeah, lab setup. You fun, fun, fun. Just show me the bypasses. I know the one that I normally use is probably in here because it's a pretty standard. I just don't, maybe just PowerShell, no profile. Pipe it into PowerShell, no profile. Let's see if that works. All right, so we want to run. Hey, come on, man. Type. There you go. Pipe that into powershell.exe dash no profile. Didn't like that. Okay. It's not really the one I was looking for. Oh, yeah, forgot. You got to throw like a 
dash on the end of that. Still didn't like it though. All right, we we persevere. Um, bum, 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 bum. oh yeah, you could totally make it a web. So this is like reaching out to a web assets. Uh, download a PowerShell script from the internet and execute it without having to write it to disk. Uh, oh yeah, maybe I think that's a no p nop is that, and then dash c i e x. Maybe that would work. PowerShell dash nop dash c. I e well, I don't know if I e x will work, but use the command switch. Let's see here. Okay, we'll try. That's a pretty simple looking one. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, how do we do that again? PowerShell.exe dash command, and then whatever you want to do. PowerShell exe dash command. All right. PowerShell.exe dash command. And then is it a SB? Okay. Oh no, it's still saying running scripts is disabled. Okay. Man, well maybe, well we've got 15 of them. So one of these have got to work. Uh, short command, that's okay. Use the encode command. Command equals, right host, blah, 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 blah. That's where your command goes. And then, so this is all getting put into like variables. And then, oh, and then you encode it into base 64. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. I guess I can just... I can just copy this. Copy. Go here. Pop it in. You'll notice it freaked out. Because it got me uh, unexpected token bytes and expression. I don't know what's going on there. I'm... Okay. It didn't like that like that at all well this is a learning process ladies and gentlemen that's how things go when you're learning uh, computer security anybody tells you hey you know it's easy just jump on in water's fine it is the water is fine we're glad to have you but it can take a hot minute to like figure stuff out this ladies and gentlemen is the real world you're seeing it live and in color right in front of you um i don't know why that didn't work it seems like it would have worked but maybe we need to do these things one at a time because that's how they did it. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to just kind of back this up a bit. I persevere. I don't give up. Command equals uh, dot slash ASB by pass dot PS1. One. And then, bing. Do that. Okay. Didn't mind that. I'm just going to read from the top up there, which is going to be dollar sign bytes equals, I guess I can just copy this. Um, where do I need to end this at? Yeah, right there. Copy that. Bing. Back this up and just paste it in. Bing. There we go. Then I will do this. Paste that in. Almost at the station. Copy the last part. Copy and paste. Oh, cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this system. Man, I really thought that one was going to work. We persevere. Moving on. Uh, what else do we have? Invoke command, right? Yeah, this is the um, invoke expression. So get content, I just said forward slash invoke expression. Okay. Let's see if that works. Get content. And then the PS1 file, and then pipe that into invoke. All right. Get dash content. I feel like I've done this one before, actually. Uh, dot slash a speed bypass pipe that into um yeah invoke no not Mimi cats it's in right 
Go back. I can never remember the invoke dash expression. I'm so bad at this. Invoke dash expression. Oh, oh. So we didn't get red text on that. And it came back as true. That makes me think, that makes me feel like it actually ran that. Right? Because that ran. Let's try that. Let's just give it, it, it what it did. So we will, oh, what, what was it doing? It was like, oh, it had like a runme.ps1, which I guess was uh, just an, uh, a printing of, yeah, right host. Bing, bing, bing. Okay. I think that ran. Uh, I'm just saying, I'm going to go with that. How do we verify that? How do we, I mean, the true value that comes back makes me think this ran because there was no output. It just said true. I'm going to go with that. I think that the invoke expression worked and there it is again. Use invoke expression, get content, bang, invoke expression. Did I see that twice or did I scroll up the wrong way? Bypass. Anyway, looks like we got some. Looks like that one ran. So if that one ran, then that means I got execution on my script. And bada bing. There we go. Okay, back to AMC bypasses. All right, so that's cool. Oh, right. Yeah, because it ran that code. That was that whole like crazy PowerShell. Oh, now that that's wrong. Oh, yes. It's supposed to, I'm looking at the picture. I don't know if you can see this. But when it ran AMC bypass, the return value was true. Now I can just run invoke Mimi cats. Um, invoke Mimi cats. Dang. Cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled. But it didn't say it was like the devil, you know. Um, what if we do the same thing? Just get content dot, uh, dot slash. Oh, sorry. ASB bypass. Like invoke no expression. And I love their their autofill. Leaves a lot to be desired. Invoke dash X. I know you could probably do IEX. Just says true. Oh, Cause I did the wrong one. I'm a crazy person. I want Mimi Cats. I want invoke Mimi Cats. There we go. Yeah, it ran. <laughs> Losing my mind. Hey, I'm learning, right? I had never done this before. This is my first time. Give myself a break, right? Uh, but that's cool. So there, we got another bypass to work. Nice. A slightly different approach. The memory patching technique is to use different machine language instructions. Yada, yada, yada. That's cool. Alternative bypass is by Paul. So there's like a lot of this. We're on, uh, just to remind ourselves, memory patching. Uh, number four. So there's a different couple of different ways in which we could do memory patching. Uh, we finally got one to work and that, that seemed to be great. They gave us the code. So that helped. Uh, and now we're on to number five, right? With a bullet. Number five, golden rings. No, forcing an error, forcing the AMC initialization to fail. AMC and it failed. We've seen that before. Uh, will result that no scan will be initiated for the for current process. Originally, this was disclosed by Mac Raber, and Microsoft has developed a signature to prevent wider usage, avoiding to use thing, uh, avoiding to use directly the strings with the usage of variables. That was a weird sentence. Um, can evade AMSI with the same method. So again, fire these off, and it might work. Sure. Um, can I just do this? Copy, slap that into here. Actually, let me exit out and restart it so all that stuff goes away. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. We try to do things. CD to documents. It is fun for us. Control V, and then bam. So it didn't like something in there. Oh man, it doesn't like this like one-liner business. That's okay. That's all right. We can do it anyway. Well, I guess we'll have to do the old copy paste. 
Bing, ding. And then no, 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 no. There we go. Hit that. And then this. And then that. And then this. And then guess what? Yep, that. Hit this assembly one. Copy. Paste. Hit it. Hit this one with the field. Copy, paste, hit it. And last but not least, copy, paste, hit it. Now, now what do we do? Okay, we've got all that stuff in there. Once that's done, invoke Mimi Cats. We will see. Dot slash, invoke the Mimi Cats. No, you don't, because running scripts is disabled on this system, which is funny. Oh, you know what we can try to do? Uh, type. Do it like I did before. Ha <laughs> ha! See? It didn't. It didn't give me a problem. It didn't give me no problem. Right? So I'm going to just prove that that worked by closing PowerShell. Helping this back up. And CD into documents. And then type invoke BME cats. And you see, now it is blocked. Because we didn't do the thing. Right? Which was number five. Remind me what number five was it again? Forcing an error. Interesting. So, yeah, great, because we are initializing, uh, we're forcing AMC initialization to fail. So it can't run. Therefore, once that happens, nah, you know worky. That was a good one. Worked pretty well. Since there is a signature for the AMC and it failed flag, Adam Chester discovered an alternative method, which is attempt to force an error in order flag to be set in a legitimate way and not in the console. This bypass allocates a memory region for the AMC context, and since the AMC session is set to null, will result in an error. Okay. This discovery has been described in the article. Using this evasion without any obfuscation will fail as Microsoft has created signatures. Is there obfuscation here? No. Is there obfuscation here? Obfuscation versus, yeah. Yeah, looks like we just grab it is. Copy. And off we go. We already know that it didn't work here, so paste that in. Oh, I got a feeling this ain't going to work, but... Whoa! Yeah, I didn't like that. So <laughs> I always love it when that thing happens. It's like, hey, what are you doing? You need to calm the hell down, like, right now before I get upset. And it's like, oh, hey, hey, I'm just... Just a guy learning here, man. Don't get upset with me. I'm going to have some fun. That's all. It's, it's going to be a good time. Uh, but I didn't think so, right? So that was fun. Okay. So I definitely saw that one and did not like it at all. Uh, so number six. This brings us to number six. Man, there are a lot of these. How many are there? Registry key modification. AMC providers are responsible for the scanning process of the antivirus. Just checking. Uh, uh. I'm sorry, scanning process by the antivirus product and are registered in the local, in the location of the registry, the GUID for the Windows Defender display below. Okay. Removing the registry key of the AMC provider will disable the ability of the Windows Defender to perform AMC inspection and evade the control. However, deleting the registry is not considered a stealthy approach if there is sufficient monitoring in place. I'm not going to delete that. Because no, right? Because, uh, but it's good to know that it's there and you could probably, I would almost... Guarantee that one works. I don't know why I think that. Just my gut feeling that if it's out of the registry, this just doesn't work anymore. And then you can just do whatever you feel like doing. So, but like they said, that's kind of a noisy way to go about it. So use with caution if you are red teaming engagements. Let's see here. DLL hijacking. DLL hijacking. This is like an oldie but a goodie just for, you know, it's been around a while. DLL hijacking. Can be used to evade AMC from user land. Oh, that's cool, right? Uh, it has been described by SensePost. Uh, the only requirements is to create a non-legitimate AMC.dll file and plant it on the same folder as PowerShell 64-bit, which could be copied to a user-writable directory. The proof of concept code has been released by SensePost and is demonstrated below. There's proof of code concept, right? And then you execute... PowerShell, 
Executing PowerShell outside of the standard directory will load the AMC DLL file, which contains all necessary functions to operate. However, AMC will not be initiated. So you're just basically going, yeah, do everything except that AMC thing. Don't like that. So let's just let them sleep. They're tired. You know, we don't need to get them involved in this. We're just going to have a little fun between friends and no one. It's a victimless crime, right? You won't, you won't be upset. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. And then miter attack talking about this and YouTube. Don't worry. So there were six. I'm wondering if this is possible. I see that they've got, they have their own PowerShell script. Is that what's going on here? So yeah, that's what they're doing. Okay. So I'm going to try this. Right. Am I, or is this like, is this PowerShell? Oh no, this is, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to do this. I don't have a C compiler. This is a compiled, duh, because it's a DLL. What was I thinking? Um, I would have to compile that and then see if it will work. But that's a cool way to go about it. If you got a compiler, compile the code, copy the PowerShell.exe executable, put it in a user-controlled area with the DLL, make sure they're together, run it, and you should be good to go on the AMC bypass. So there we go. I feel good, right? I feel like I've I've learned a thing or two. Hopefully you have as well today on bypassing Windows Defender, specifically the AMC DLL that tries to check and, and pass things off to Windows Defender for that check. We had quite a few of these bypass methods actually work for us. So, hey, there's that. There were, there were six of them to go from. I think we probably executed four of them. Um, and they worked really well, right? Maybe we got three. It was three or four. So 50%, if I targeted, you know, 200, 500 machines, I, and let's say 500, and I got 250, that's a lot, right? That's pretty good day at the, at the office right there. So really cool stuff. I enjoyed that. Now I've got a little extra. I know a little more, right? I'm feeling... I'm feeling frisky. I'm feeling good. So hopefully you did as well. If you like what you saw, don't forget, hit the subscribe button. Smash, 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 smash. And then, of course, like, notification bell. And like I said in the beginning, I now have an Instagram page. I've got somebody running that for me, but don't worry. They're taking cool content, putting it on there, starting to build that up. So look for that to become uh, more of a thing as we continue on down the road. Having a good time learning about cybersecurity. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I will see you next time.